You said it was uh, PV over T equals PV over T, didn't you? And what, did, what was that gas law called? Was it called the combined gas law or something like that? I don't remember. Okay. Um, but you can, you can solve any of these problems. And sometimes they don't tell you something, but it just stays constant. And so you can, you can just cancel it out. Right? So P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. Right? In general, in general, most of these things you can just sort of think about them and think about what's going to be the effect of the change that they make. If you add more stuff to the container, it's going to increase the pressure, pressure right? Or if the pressure stays the same, then the temperature would have to go down to compensate for that, right? So I mean, you, so if you if you understand sort of the basic thing that causes pressure, then it seems to me you ought to be able to just sort of reason your way through these. But you can, you can use this as a as a um, rule. Now the only rule for this, in the ideal gas law we were all picky, it was all about unit conversions, which I never was terribly good at. The only rule for these is that they have to be, the units have to be the same. All right, so if this is grams and this is moles, that's not going to work. Okay, but if this is grams and that's grams, that works, because grams are proportional to moles, as long as it's the same stuff, right? So you could, N just means amount of stuff in this case, right? It could be pounds. You could talk about pounds of stuff, okay? Um, uh, pressure, we could use atmospheres, pounds per square inch, but whatever it is, these pressures have to be in the same units. We could use liters, we could use bushels, uh, cubic inches, or whatever we want, slugs. right? S not slugs, because it's not volume, right? Okay, but these volumes have to be in the same units, but the thing that's, that's really important here is that it's got to be absolute. Okay, so if we're talking about the mass of the stuff, we've got to be talking about mass of just the gas, not the mass of the container. It's got to be just the gas. Temperature has to be absolute. This is not a different unit. Okay, you can't, it won't work if they're both Celsius because think about that. You go from one degree Celsius to two, you're not going to double the pressure, right? It's got to be Kelvins. These have to be absolute scales. Uh, pressure has to be absolute pressure. Right? The volume can't be the increase in volume. It's got to be what the final volume is, the initial volume, final volume, what the volume really is. Okay? So, so yeah. Absolute. By, by absolute, we mean what it really is. What it really is. I think we've got some examples here we can try. Okay? A nitrogen cylinder contains 3.42 kilograms of nitrogen. So assuming that's the increase in mass of the cylinder, right? Uh, 2,000 PSI, 20 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure if the temperature is 150 degrees Celsius, but you've released 0 0.20 kilograms of nitrogen? Great Scott. Okay, uh, 2,000 PSI, is that absolute pressure? Probably. Probably it's absolute, okay? Just be careful. Chances are if you're working in a lab and you look at the pressure gauge, it's giving you gauge pressure. That's not gonna be a huge mistake here because 2,000 PSI is roughly the same as 2,014.7 PSI. Right, there's not a huge difference there, but but let's let's go with it. That's absolute pressure, right? Um, and 20. So so I think the first situation that we can set this thing up um, is uh, let's see, 2,000 psi. Right, the volume is we don't know, right? Uh, the n is 3.42, and the t is 20 plus 273. 0.15, right? So 293.15. So we've got to we've got to turn the Celsius into Kelvins, right? No ideal gas law works uh, with with Celsius, right? And we don't know the volume. So what are we going to do? Are we just out of luck? No, it's the same volume in the in the next thing, right? Okay. So I'm going to say that the new pressure. What is the pressure? So this is P2 is what we're looking for, times the same volume divided by. So if we've released 0.2 kilograms, how many kilograms do we have? I don't put 0.2 in there as the mass, do I? Because that's not what there really is there, right? So what is really there? If it started at 3.42 and you release 0.2, then you have 3.22, yeah. Right? Okay, and then uh, it's 150 degrees Celsius, so it's going to be, um, it's going to be 20, uh, no, whoops, 150 plus 273.15. Yeah, 
Now, what do we do with the volume? Does the volume cancel? Yeah, indeed it does, right? And then we could just do a little math. I think we're going to do is multiply by the 3.22, right? And then we're going to multiply by this guy too, right? 150 plus 273. Now it's calculator time. This is 423.15 is what this guy is. And then this is 293.15, right? And so my new pressure is 423.15 times 3.22 times 2,000 divided by 3.42 divided by 293.15 then we get 2718.09. Yeah. So that's the party line. That's how you're supposed to use the combined gas law. Let's do it a different way, right? We're asking for the pressure. The original pressure was what? 2000, right? Okay. Releasing gas, is that going to increase or decrease the pressure? Decrease it, right? So I'm going to multiply by 3.22 over 3.42. Why? Because that's the ratio of what they are, and I know that it decreases it. So I make the ratio less than 1. Yeah? What's it going to be the effect of increasing the temperature? Increase it. So I go 423.15 over 293.15. Why? Because that's the ratio of the actual temperatures, right? You have to use the actual absolute temperature. And I know that it increases. I know that temperature increases pressure. Right? So if you increase the temperature, you get the thing, and that's a lot faster, isn't it? I don't know, than putting it all in here. Maybe not. You know? So whatever makes the most sense to you, this is the way that I did it, because I deeply understood the ideal gas law. That, that will give you the right answer right there. Um, and I didn't have to go, it's, I don't know. I think it's sort of laborious to go back to this thing. Yeah? yeah? Should we try this? Holy cow. Hey, we got the same one. An airtight drum hiller. <laughs> one atmosphere. <laughs> Oops. Were we recording? We were. <laughs> this one's for you, drum. So, so the new temperature is going to be higher than the old temperature. We're asking about temperature, aren't we? Isn't it going to be higher in the same proportion that the pressure is greater? I'm thinking it is, right? Do we know N? No. Do we know V? No. Uh, do we know the pressure? Yes. Do we know the volume? Yes. So we don't know N or V, but we suffice it to say that if it's airtight and it's the same drum, it's not going to be significantly larger at a different temperature because things expand only very slightly, right? 